In this video, you're gonna learn how to run both main stage and Ableton Live from one laptop. This is gonna come in handy if you're needing to have main stage producing your keyboard patches and Ableton running your tracks in worship. So I'll walk you through how to get this set up with an audio interface and you'll see this whole configuration and how it works even plugged into a mixing console. Coming up. I'm the creator of churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. I've gotten the question a lot. Can I run both main stage and Ableton Live on the same computer? Yes, you can. I'm going to show you how to get this set up and how to configure it all. And the main reason why you would want to run main stage and Ableton Live on the same computer is to run your keyboard patches in main stage and then run your click and backing tracks and any other MIDI automation you have going on uh, in Ableton Live. And this can really come in handy for worship rather than having two computers do this, which is actually the setup we usually do at our church. We have a dedicated Ableton laptop and a dedicated main stage laptop. Um, instead, you could run both applications on the same computer. So a little caveat though, Though, you do want to make sure you have a relatively newer and powerful spec'd out uh, Mac to accomplish this to ensure that everything is going to go smoothly. So I'm going to show you real quick. These are the specs of this computer. Uh, as you can see, 13 inch 2017 uh, MacBook Pro, 2.3 gigahertz, i5, 8 gigs of RAM. So this is not a fully spec'd out MacBook Pro. It's relatively newer, um, but you'll see this seems to be stable running both of these applications. And you'll see on this MacBook Pro, um, here we have Ableton Live running our full set list of tracks in arrangement view. And then it also has main stage running the Sunday Keys 2 template. So once you have Ableton up and running, main stage up and running, you need to find a way to send all that audio from this laptop to your mixing console. And you also want to have the ability to send multiple channels of audio because you don't want all this audio to just blend into one channel because you want to separate your click from your tracks and from your keyboard sound. So at the very least, three, ideally four outputs are required. And to accomplish this, we are using the Behringer UMC 404 audio interface. This is a really budget friendly interface and it has four quarter inch outputs on the back of it. I absolutely love this interface. We actually usually just use this for Ableton Live. Um, in most Sundays, we're actually running four outputs out of Ableton Live to give us at least four channels to work with. Uh, but in this case, we're gonna use this one interface. We're gonna send two channels from main stage. So we have a stereo output put from main stage and then we're gonna send just two channels out from Ableton Live one for click and cues and then one for our backing tracks ideally I would have an interface that had maybe six to eight outputs because I really prefer having at least four outputs when I'm running tracks with Ableton Live so the first thing you need to do to configure this is go into main stage go to your uh, preferences hit audio and make sure for audio output you have your interface selected so we do right here so by by default, in this main stage template, everything is being sent to outputs one and two, which is going to map to the outputs one and two on my audio interface. So we're just going to leave it at that. Now let's head over to Ableton Live. And here in Ableton Live, I'm just going to go to Preferences. I'm going to go to um, Audio Output Device, and we have that same interface selected here. And under Output Configurations, I'm going to make sure that I only have um, three and four selected because I'm not going to be using outputs one and two for Ableton Live. We're already using one and two for main stage. So just make sure three and four are selected here, both the mono and stereo option. And then I'm going to exit out of here. And now I can go to the main output uh, configurations for Ableton and make sure for cue out I have selected three. So that means my click in Ableton is going to be on three, um, as well as any other tracks I want to allocate to that, like my guide cues. And then for four, we're going to have the master out. So now what's going to happen is you'll see we actually have our, our mixing console plugged in. So we're going from uh, this computer to the interface to the mixing console. We're going to screen capture this mixing console for you. So you'll see when I play main, in main stage, we have the uh, channels mapped to the right channels in the mixing console there. Um, and then when I play in Ableton Live, same thing, but it goes to channel 17 and 18. 
So here's just a quick demonstration of playing some sounds in main stage and Ableton Live at the same time. First, two, three, four. I'm not a piano player, as you can tell, but I can play a C major chord to a C suspended chord pretty, pretty well. Oh man, so good. So you can see it works. So now let's take a look. Let's 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 run both of these things and let's take a look at the activity monitor. So I'll keep playing and I'll pull up the activity monitor for you. Chorus two, three, four. So you get the point, um, it seems to be working pretty darn well. So on the activity monitor, you can see that it's definitely using a fair amount of CPU. I honestly don't know what half of this means, uh, but it sounds great. There's no like clicks or pops or dropouts. The, both pieces of software seem to be operating fine, even when I'm uh, playing Ableton Live. And uh, it's at 25% uh, CPU capacity. Um, and again, looking at the activity monitor while it's all playing, everything seems to be running fine under memory. Obviously, main stage taking up a lot of it, 2.38 gigs. Turn around, two, three, four. Seems to be working fine. You know, to do a realistic test of this, we'd want to play through like a whole worship set. Um, I know that with my MacBook Pro, which is uh, the 15 inch with a faster processor, 16 gigs of RAM, I'm pretty sure this would run just fine. I really think the key is having an audio interface to help the computer process all of this audio. I think that's one big reason why this is running smoothly. So main stage is definitely a processor and memory hog. Um, Ableton is definitely much more efficient. So if you're just running tracks back uh, like we do uh, in Ableton, I don't think it's gonna cause too many issues for you running it alongside of main stage. So that is how you can run both main stage and Ableton Live from one laptop when you're just wanting keyboard patches in main stage and running your tracks in Ableton Live. If you have any personal experience doing this, let us know below in the comments. Tell us what your setup is like and what works well for you. We're gonna list all the gear and hardware that we have here down below in the description. So if you wanna pick some of it up yourself, go ahead and click those links. If you're a worship leader wanting to master Ableton Live for your worship ministry, then check out worshipleaderschool.com where you'll find my complete lead worship with Ableton program along with a complete course library covering all sorts of topics in worship ministry. We also have a community forum and we have weekly office hours to provide you real-time help. So go to worshipleaderschool.com to learn more and join today. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends in worship ministry. You can check out some related videos right over there and don't forget to subscribe to the church front channel so you can continue to receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry